Everybody have a good weekend? Everybody get rested? Well, it's a bummer. All right, we need to look at the schedule. Damn, we got a week. So a week from today is last day of classes. Um, So we need to talk about when to take the final. There's a written and a hands-on final. So I don't know what the fine your finals look like in your other classes, but it looks like the the week of starting on the eleventh and going through the seventeenth is when final exams are scheduled to be taken. And we can take it like on Wednesday the twelfth at 9 a.m. or we can do it on the last day of classes it really just depends on if you guys want to get out a little earlier we can do it on monday the 10th so a week from today or um we can wait and do it wednesday i don't know when your other finals are so you guys can tell me what you want to do? I'd say Monday. Monday's good for Anybody want to wait till Wednesday? All right. Well, we will plan on taking the final on Monday, 
the 10th at 9 a.m. We'll start in here. And we'll start with the written file. Um, so, on your final exam, you're going to have 50 multiple choice questions pulled out of your homework. Here's the cool thing, because you have an awesome instructor. You see this final exam practice on mine? You, 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 uh, you can't see it on yours yet, but. Now you can. Uh, you can take that practice as many times as you want to for those 50 multiple choice questions. It's a good chance. But the thing is, is that when you take that test, when you take the final, you're gonna get a random 50 questions, okay? So that's what that, final, that practice is for. So you can take it as many times as you want to, right? So you, that, and that saves you from having to go back to all of your homeworks individually and study each one um, and it will not affect your grade, obviously. So you can start studying for that final now if you wanted to. Um, you're also going to need to know the, um, the nine lead three phase motor connections. So study this and let me know if you have questions or if you want to go back over those connections, I'm happy to do it. I'm recording this all the, by, by the way too, and I'll put it online. So if you wanna go back through all, everything that you need to know. Um, and then there's gonna be some pictures on the written final. That's not what Yeah. 
Okay. Hey, shut up. Obviously, he doesn't respect my authority, whoever that is. I hope it's not the, like the president of the college. What are you doing? Is that you making all that noise out there? What's up? Are you making all that noise out there? Yeah, I just, yeah, that's me. Okay. Huh? Absolutely nothing. Uh, what am I doing? Oh. So if you saw a picture like this on the final, it said, uh, click on the the coil of the forward and reverse motor starter. Could you do it? My old guy used to have a laser pointer on it. Um, if the question said, Okay. So what did I ask you? The coil of the forward reverse motor starter? It's kind of a bad question because which coil? Um, If the question said on the single motor starter, click on the overload heaters, could you do it? Are they right here? If that's the case on the test, there will be like a tolerance, like if you clicked anywhere in here, click inside that box, you should get it right. So. On these pictures, if you got one wrong, if it marked you wrong, and you think you got it right, then you just got to come tell me and I'll look at I'll look exactly where you clicked and uh, see if it was a mistake or not. But I don't think I've had any problems with this one in the past. But what if it said, okay, on wire number four in this drawing? Everybody see wire number four? It's this one right here. Connecting all these little pieces. So if the question said, hey, wire number four has already landed on all these spots marked in orange. see all four or of those orange dots so the question says wire number four has been landed on all 
of the spots marked in orange. Click on the part of the picture that miss it is missing a wire number four. Where is that? Right. You would click it on the picture itself, on, on the component itself. So as I'm looking at this, this is uh, the load side of the start, normally open. This is the coil, of the motor starter. This is the green light. And this is the coil of CR1. So what's missing? Motor starter uh, one, normally open. Uh, this one happens to have two normally open sets of contacts. On the on the final, it won't be that confusing. This is a different picture that I just pulled out of my ass. But if uh, that one wasn't there, and you if if you clicked anywhere inside this box, you would get that question right. Does that make sense? Um, Okay, on the forward reverse motor starter in this picture, could you click on the load side um, terminals or lugs? Which ones are they? Load side. Bottom. Right, these are what actually go down to the motor. The motor in this case is the load. So if that's the load side, what do you call these guys up here? The line side. Does everybody understand the difference between line and load? We've gone through it, but it's stuff that you need to know for the final. So I just want to make sure it's fresh on your mind. That concludes review for the written final. Um, Nope. Sure don't.
again, this is not verbatim the picture that you will see on these questions. There's different pictures, but if you understand the components, which parts of the components are which parts, which part is normally open and normally closed and all stuff you should know. Um, okay, the written final, you're gonna have um, a pretty basic wiring diagram given to you. That's not identical to any of the labs, but similar, nothing that you haven't seen before. And you have to wire it up and wire numbers. Wire numbers, um, if it's correct the first time, then you get a certain amount of points. If it's correct the second time you try it, then it's um, full or if you get it right the first time, you get full points, right? If you get it right the second time you try it, then you get, I don't remember, I'll have to look and see how I, I have some kind of rubric on it, see how it's graded, but um, you cannot ask me questions on the hands-on final. You can, but I may or may not give you an answer depending on if it's something like you should know this, you know. Um, and you guys know me by now, I'm, I'm a dickhead and I'm out to get you to fail this final. So don't talk to me. <laughs> All right, what else? I think that's it for the final. Um, you do have some labs left to do. Let me see. You see this um, 24 volts DCs, DC labs. Since we're almost out of time, I'm not going to make you guys do do those. I might offer those as extra credit. Um, first things first, though, what you need to have done is the VFD homework. It says it's due May 14th. I think I'll make it do the day of the final, just so when you're done with the final, your grades are, I don't wanna to have to wait till the last minute to post grades because somebody's trying to finish one homework assignment. You know what I mean? So have, I should look and see if any of you are even done with that. All right. So VFD homework. This is due. I'm just trying to do. Monday, May 10th at, I'll make it noon, why not? In order to do this homework, you need some PDFs. If you go to course content on Blackboard, um, See this lap 16, lap 17, lap 18? Those are the PDFs that you need. But at the same time, if you go to your Google Drive shared folder, you're also gonna see these ones. And these ones, are the same PDFs without all the bullshit. Let me explain that. In a minute. So 
So these PDFs were made by Amitrol based on some trainers that uh, I don't even know if we ever had them. But now we have these drives and our motor control stations out there that you guys have been working on um, that are better than Amitrol's trainers. But we still use these to teach you about how to walk through programming a, a variable frequency drive. Um, I would recommend that you do the homework first so you have that knowledge in your brain. Um, but here's how it looks unedited and it might have some stuff, but uh, this runs through actually how, how a, a variable frequency drive works. Um, but then you'll see how you get to these pages that are, okay, skill one. Perform the following subset. Perform a lockout tag out on the safety switch. And then I actually went through and sort of half-ass edited this. But this is the, the trainer that you're supposed to walk through using these learning activity packets or laps. Um, but we don't have those trainers. So I went through and edited these for all the stuff that you're going to need for just the homework and just the labs. So if you go in here and click click on, all right, lap 16, it's the same thing without all the bullshit. You have an introduction, you have the objectives, and this is the stuff that you'll need for that homework assignment, okay? Then when you get to the skills, the skills are what you actually need to, to walk through out in the lab. Um, where are you, skills? There it is. And you see how skill one starts at number three? Because I don't give a shit about one or two. So I jumped to three and put it in there for you, okay? Uh, this one says, and identify the blah, 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 blah. All right, this comes to my next point. You can only do these labs for lap 16, 17, and 18 on the trainers out there that have this drive mounted to it. There's some other uh trainers out there that have a different drive or no drive at all. But if it has this Allen Bradley variable frequency drive on it, then you can run through these uh, labs in the PDFs. You'll need the PDFs. Um, I, somewhere around here, I have the printouts, but they're not edited to remove all the bullshit. So it might be a little confusing when it says on the MT85R trainer, take this module and put it there. Well, that's not what we're doing. We're um, So you can use your phone on these. There are laptops in the lab that you're welcome to take over to your trainer to walk through these. Um, and all you're gonna do is wire up and program a drive. Have any of you have done that before? Okay, this is really straightforward. You follow the instructions step by step and it'll tell you how to do everything. It's really cookie cutter, so you'll like it. But the problem is there's only six of these drives out there. There's 12 set, There's 12 stations, but only half of them have these, okay? So we're gonna have to share. Since we only have um, a week left, what if I allowed you to work with partners? Yes or no? Okay, I'll just say yes, you can, all right? You don't have to, but you can work with a partner. It's just gonna save us some time since we have a week left. Um, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, so these are the these are the um, PDFs that you need for the homework and the labs. And they're in your shared drive folder. Everybody get it? We all good? We all on the same page? All right, the last thing. One of the labs has you, I guess I'll just find it. I think it's 17. We'll have you um, use a potentiometer to control the speed. 
You should have all been taught what a potentiometer is, have you? Here it is right here. Um, no, the potentiometer jacks are color coded. Make sure you connect them exactly as shown. Otherwise the drive will not work properly. Well, no shit, but you should know how to, a potentiometer works. So the ones on your stations are not going to be black, blue, and red. They might be, but it shouldn't matter if they are or they're not. Uh, how do you know that the blue one has to be on number two? Like, what is its job? Remember how a potentiometer works? Yeah, it's the wiper, yeah. Wiper or slide or... Uh, let me answer that. Let me answer that. It's your mom? Oh, same thing. <laughs> Cody's busy. Like that? You see what I did there? Yeah. The potentiometer. Ooh. This is a potentiometer. If yours doesn't have one and it should, we'll uh, mount one on there. I don't know. You have these little dials that you can use, but whatever. But on this one, okay, that's all the way left and all the way right. So this is a one. This is a one k ohm resistor, so a thousand ohms. Um, This guy here, this pin, is going to go to a big 1K ohm resistor. The other side of it reaches here. So what should the resistance always be between these two points? 1,000 ohms. This one is tapped and actually sits, it's like a wiper, sits somewhere on here. So did I lose my shit already? Seriously? The middle guy is the wiper. So if this is a thousand ohms from here to here, uh, what would this roughly be, this distance? Maybe five or 400 ohms on this side. Maybe 600 on this side. Technically they should add up, but how the drive interprets this is it says, okay, it'll put a voltage across here, these pins one and three, and then it will read where this thing is at and, and put it as a percentage of the total. Does that make sense? So if this is uh, one, if this is pin one, this is pin two, and this is pin three, it will use two as like a percentage. So if this is a thousand ohms is the same as saying 100%, and this is 60%, it will run the drive at 60% speed of whatever that parameter is. So first you're gonna go through and set these parameters and tell it, I want you to set the maximum speed of this motor, maximum frequency at 60 Hertz. But you could also change that. You could say, hey, I want this to never go faster than 30 hertz because it's a big giant fan 
And when I go at 60 hertz, it blows the roof off this motherfucker, right? So we don't want to go over 30, 30 hertz. So if 30 is your max, it would take 60% of that 30. Just depends on, that's what all the parameters are for. And that's what you guys will run through in these learning activity packets, okay? It's all about controlling speed and torque of a, of a three-phase motor. You can do it with single-phase motors too, but an alternating current motor, when you guys run those motors through your drive or through your um, motor starters, like in your, on your labs, what frequency is that motor seeing? 60 hertz, because that's what Ameren's given us. So if we wanted to control the speed of that motor, remember the whole rotating magnetic field? Because of the frequency of the sine wave, we don't really have much choice. It's just going to spin at 60 hertz, 60 times a second. Um, it spins faster, it's like 1800 RPMs. But if we wanted to slow that down, slow that rotating magnetic field down, we'd have to change the frequency, right? These laps will explain how that's done in sequence. Um, we can't call up Amber and say, hey, can you give us 30 hertz for a little bit, please? No, they're not going to do that. Um, so we use something called drives to do that ourselves. Okay. Everybody understand potentiometer? Because I don't think you're going to see this. I don't know where it went. Yeah. Make sure your dumbass puts black on one and blue on. Well, you're not going to have a black, blue, red. You're going to have something else, but you should know how to put the wiper in the middle. <laughs> Sounds so bad. All right, I'm done. Um, any other questions about scheduling or what needs done when? Okie doke. I'll leave you to it then. eBay. Uh, looked like you forgot maybe to, that it was in person today. Yeah, because I saw that you signed on Zoom and probably nobody was there yet. Huh? Yeah. yeah, it's Monday. Happens to the best of us, but I've recorded everything. So we went over the, the schedule. For the next week, the final exam is going to be next Monday.